Now, part two of well, what am I going to do with this cardboard box? An ionizer. A high yield ionizer. And the ionizers are going to go inside the box. I have 12 of these. Uh, this particular version is 110 AC. 110 to 220 uh, and I do have some 12 volt ones but uh, that's for another project and I've got 10 of these all 10 of these are going to be hooked up in this box to 110 and then a little fan blowing out all the ion goodness that you could want and yes you want as much as you can get so to begin I have to figure how I plan on connecting these all the way around and 10 would be nice they're gonna be inside the box and you know they are 110 but believe it or not they use a red wire and a black wire which denotes DC but I'm sorry kids this is not DC this is hooked directly to 110 main so this is the template put this off to the side simple enough one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need to do a little math. Okay, I'm going to go point nine all the way around. All right, there's my dimensions. There are my dimensions. I need to cut this inner piece out. All right, and from the cutting table to here. This is kind of what I'm talking about. Let's see how these stack up. Okay, <clears throat> I may have gotten a little ahead of myself here, but that's okay. I got two left. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'd say that's about halfway between these two. And we'll do the same over here. So that's close enough. That's about halfway. Wait for that to cool. Shields up. Does that look okay? Does that look about square? Uh, think so? Okay. I'm gonna do it. Looks good. Now, like I said, at some point, which is this point right here. There we go.
Uh, and let's say we'll leave that much. Now what I need to cut out is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an octagonal, octagonal cut. A cut that I will cut octagonally. Yeah. Sure am. Alright, kids. Uh yeah, here we go. All right, let's try a little bit of uh, alcohol and see if I can get some of that black off from the marker. Huh. Okay. All right. Uh, and as far as the screws fitting in here, okay. Uh, I've already pre-drilled these with these. That way they're, I don't put too much force on the box. Wisdom. Oh. Well, that wasn't very wise. Okay. We're going to go slow. I got to find the hole. And I guess the best way is like that. Ooh. That's pretty good. Solid as a rock. Ooh, fell right onto that line. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to say that that's got to be pretty close. All right. Just like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. La, 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 la. What? Too good. Too freaking good. Too good for my own good. Good, good. I've tapped all the reds and blacks together on each side. Eventually, at some point, they'll all come together and be connected. But at least this kind of gets it out of my way. Let's go ahead and get through there and see what it's going to take to get all these out of the way, which probably a spot of hot glue or two uh, will achieve that thinking that you know thinking that a little bit you know a little bit here a little bit there just to keep it out of the way of the fan because I have a 12 volt off of AC that I want to run my fan with then off of the AC line run my ionizers okay so with that said I'm thinking that these guys
little Velcro pads. You know, this stuff's expensive at a hardware store. If you go to the dollar stores, that's what I paid for it. A dollar, and I've got 16 of them. Which I can turn into uh, 32, really. By cutting them. Uh, there is no up, there is no down. Oh, it's going to be nice. Good deal. So let's see what kind of trouble I can run into. I'm just going to... I'm just going to go balls to the wall, hope for the best. I think that would be acceptable. I don't have to put it down on the, but I could. So why don't we? Anything works. Alright, hopefully you can see I've separated the red and the black, which is, as I repeat myself, they're AC 110, 120, and uh, just keeping them together in the reds and the blacks pretty much keeps everything in, in phase, which is better than not. Is it going to make a difference? I doubt it. But keeping it in phase might add a little longevity to it, keeping everything running it um, at its proper. So these are out of the way for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and concentrate on the 12 volt power supply for the fan. I want to get that all connected up. Now when I solder this, I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of doing an inline shrink, I'm just going to cover the whole thing like this. So let's get that soldered. Little bit of flux. Got my USB soldering iron. Heated up, ready to go. I love this thing. Uh, one of my videos I've showed how to bypass um, the touch switch and the motion detector. Uh, by shorting out the um, integrated circuit uh, 555 timer. Big old blob of solder. I think this wire has some aluminum in it, which makes it very difficult to solder onto. Very difficult. And about halfway. Uh, I caught this on sale on eBay for I think it was like $12. Uh, it makes for a real nice heat shrink tube shrinker heater and uh, I hang it up this way because it does not cool itself uh, when you lay it down that heat just kind of stays in there so I hang it up this way until I'm done with it and then I put it away so there we go we got these little guys just leave those, leave those old tails on there okay so I figured out that I'd wind up putting it down here. 
but first I think I may have to go ahead and do these guys. Now again this is an awkward way to do it but I've got heat shrink that will take care of the mess. You know there's a secret recipe in uh, rosin soldering flux. Um, another video I'm going to explain that in greater detail. So here we go. Just heat the hell out of it and flow some solder. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use that whole piece. It's a hot box.